good guys in this video i'll be showing you how to create 3d camera movements like the lyrical lemonade gbp music video all within after effects for that music video they did use blender in order to create that entire 3d scene but in this video i'll be showing you guys how to create those similar camera movements all within after effects and in order to create this animation you're going to need a 3d model i'll include a link to this 3d model in the description down below it's a completely free model once you click the link in the description it should take you to this website sketchfab.com and then we're going to use this model in order to create this project so you just want to scroll down and then click download 3d model and then we're going to download this version right here the glb converted format so once you download this just import it into after effects once you open up after effects and you downloaded your model you want to click your model and then click import so here in after effects for my composition settings i'll be working in a 1920 by 1080 composition and it's going to be 24 frames per second click ok and then once you import the 3d model into after effects you want to drag it into the composition and then you should have this little tab pop up for the advanced i just leave it as it is and then for the basic click the make comp size option and then click OK. And because our model is a lot smaller, I'm going to scale that up and have the anchor point right at the center of our model. And in order to have it right at the center, you wanna hold the control button, double click the anchor point tool, and then your anchor point should be right at the center. We're going to then go into the position and reset the position so that our model is at the center of our composition. You want to then rotate your model and make sure that it's facing the front. So have the Z rotation at 180 degrees. We're going to then import a picture in in order to represent the ground plane because our subject is like floating in the air and it just looks weird so we want to have a ground plane for our subject so what i did was just download an image from google so if you just search that up and download it you can just bring it into after effects turn this into a 3d layer and then we're going to rotate it so that it creates a ground plane so rotate it at negative 90 degrees and then make sure to bring down the position i'm also going to scale it up so that it fills the entire screen and then i'm going to add a motion tile so that it extends further into the composition have the output width and the output height at 300 click mirror edges and then we're going to open up two views so that we can see a second view of both of our subject as well as the ground plane if you want to change the view just make sure to go on the bottom right tab over here and then you can change the perspective of your camera i'll have my view at the left side and then what i'm going to do is just lower the position of our subject so that it looks like it's actually touching the ground plane have it at around there and then bring up the position of the ground plane so that it looks like our car is right on top of the ground after adjusting both the model as well as the ground plane i'm going to go back to the first view and i'm going to create a new camera so that we can actually create this animation for the camera you want to make sure that your preset is selected at 15 millimeters because in the actual music video they used a wider lens so you want to make sure that your preset is set at 15 millimeters click ok and now what we're going to do is just add some lighting to our subject so i'll add a new spotlight go to light and then create a new spotlight open up two views again when it comes to creating 3d animations inside after effects it's a lot easier to work with multiple views i'm going to move the position of the spotlight and have it above our subject i'll have the position of the spotlight just like that you can modify the position to however you want your lighting to be but i'll have mine like this and then open up the options for our spotlight go to the light options and then i'm going to increase the feather just so that it can cover a wider range of our composition also just increase the feather just by a little i'll have it at around like 62 percent and then i'm going to add a new light just so that we can see the back part of our car better so i'll add a new light instead of a spotlight i'm going to add a point light click ok i'm going to lower the intensity of point light because it's a little too bright so i'll just have it a lot darker i'll have it at like 25 percent and then we're going to move the position of our point light move the light further back so the further we move it back we can see the back of our subject better keep moving it further back until i get a well-lit subject i'll have it at around like negative 3000 and then for the y-axis i'll just bring that up and have it at negative 260 and then just bring the light a little more towards the side now if we look at our subject without the point light it's a lot darker in the back and then if we turn it on we can see that the back part of our car is well lit so we're going to go back into one view bring this camera layer above other layers create a new adjustment layer just 
so that our subject is a better color because it's looking a little flat and a little dull right now. So I'm going to add brightness and contrast. And because I only want it to affect our car, I'm going to turn on the toggle and switches, go to the track mat, and then click our subject. And after clicking your subject, your layer is actually going to turn off. So you want to make sure to just turn that back on. And then now for the brightness and contrast, I'll just increase that to 50. And then the contrast, I'll have that at 80. And then for the next effect, I'll add a hue and saturation, increase the master saturation to 30. And then I want the tail lights to pop out a little more. So what I'm going to do is just go to the reds, increase the saturation so that we can see the value of our tail lights a little more. I have that at 49. And this is the before without the adjustment layer. And then this is the after. So as you guys can see, it looks a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to actually move on to the animation of our subject. And in order to create this 3D sequence, we're going to be using a few null objects in order to actually animate our camera. So what we're going to do is create a new null object. And then you're going to want to make sure to click this box so that it's a 3D layer. And I'm also just going to change the color of this. Get the parent pick whip tool, attach it to that null. So now our camera is attached to that null. So whatever we do with this null, the camera moves with it. And because we're working with 3D, it can be a little render intensive on your computer. So just be aware of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just zoom out the camera, just like the Central C music video, like in the start where the camera was all the way at the top, and then it slowly comes down and it animates into the car. So I'll just have it all the way towards the top and bring it towards the back. Also rotate the camera so that it's pointed down a little. So have the X rotation at negative 20 and then bring up your camera just a little more. Okay, so I'm going to have my camera start right there, keyframe it at the beginning. And as we're keyframing it, we're going to be modifying our keyframes as well as graph editors. So honestly, this just takes a lot of trial and error in order to get the right timing of our animation. So I'll just go forward around the two second mark, keyframe it in a way where it gets closer to our car. So I'm going to keyframe it that close to our car. And now if I play this, we have our camera slowly animating towards the back of our car. And I know it stops right there, but as we add more null objects and go further with this animation, everything will connect and look a lot better. Grab these keyframes, easy ease them. Also just going to bring this towards the two second mark just so that it feels a little smoother. And now if we play this, we have a smoother animation. We're going to then go into the graph editor of these position keyframes. And in the beginning, I want to go a little slower and then go a little faster towards the end. As the animation is happening, it slowly eases into our subject. We're going to now add another null object. Go to new, click null object, and I'll change the color of this to green. Make sure it's a 3D layer, and then grab the parent pick whip tool and attach it to that null object. Okay, so now as the animation happens, we have it stop right behind our car, and the purpose of adding another null object is for this camera to create a new transition or a new movement. So in our case, we want our camera to go through the car, and in order to do that, I'm also going to keyframe the position of this null object and then what i'm going to do is just go forward to like the four second mark keyframe the position so that it goes into the car We're going to then grab those keyframes, easy ease them, and in order to create a smoother animation, you want to make sure to overlap the keyframes. Go into the graph editor of the position keyframes. I want it to go a lot faster in the beginning and then slow down once it reaches the end. And I'm also just going to move the keyframe two frames back just so that the animation feels smoother. So you always want to make sure to move around the keyframes and make sure that they're overlapping so that we can create more of a seamless animation. So now if I play this, we have more of a seamless movement. I'm also going to just move the Y axis a little higher. It's a little too low, so I'll just have it like that. Also just keyframe the camera just so that as it's animating, we have it slightly turn as it animates into the car. I'll move that to the three second mark and then just readjust this null object so that I have it a little lower. And then grab these keyframes, easy ease them. We're going to then create a new null object, make that a 3D layer, grab the parent pick whip tool and attach it to that null object. We're going to then keyframe the position of this null object. And then we're going to go forward about like 30 frames and then have it zoom in. So you're going to want to keyframe the X as well as the Z axis. We're going to have it zoom in towards the middle and also just move the X axis a little just so that as the zoom in is happening, it's at an angle. And then we're also going to keyframe the rotation as well. 
as you move the rotation, you want to then go back into the position and just make sure that the camera stays within the car. So I'll just have it like that. Keyframe the rotation at negative 14 at the same point as the position and just go back to the beginning of that keyframe and keyframe it back to zero. Grab all those keyframes, easy ease them. Go into the graph editor of the position keyframes. I'll create the graph in a way where it goes faster in the beginning and then it slows down as it animates at the end and then create the same graph for the Y rotation. Now if I play this, it doesn't look smooth at all, so what we're going to do is just move this back five frames and then move these keyframes six frames forward. And then what I'm going to do is go into the null object right before and just lower the Y axis so that we don't see the top of our car as it's animating. Readjust both of these keyframes just so that the camera isn't pushed too forward. I'm also just going to turn on the transparency grid and then have this zoom out a little more, bring up the Y axis because in the music video, as the camera goes into the car, it slows down a bit and then it captures the name tag of Cole Bennett, which is the director. I have it like that. Now, if I play this, this is what we have for our animation so far. It feels a little stiff as the camera goes into the car. So what I'm going to do is just move these keyframes back one, two, three, four frames, and then play this through again. It still feels a little stiff. So I'm going to just bring that back to two seconds and 12 frames. I'm just going to move it back again. I know it takes a lot of trial and error, but we just want to make sure that the animation is smooth. Okay, so I moved it back a few frames and this is what I have for the animation so far. I moved it back to the two second and seven frames mark. Now if I play this, we have this really smooth transition into the car. And when it comes to animations like this, we're just going to constantly have to modify the keyframes as well as the graph editors. Now, in order to create the final movement for our camera to animate out of this car, I'm going to create a final null object. Make sure that the null object is a 3D layer. Grab the parent pick whip tool and attach it to that null object. For this null object, we're going to keyframe the position as well as the Y rotation of the null object from the before. And the reason why we're keyframing the Y rotation, because once the camera animates through the car we want our camera to be facing forward because as you guys can see when it's in the car the camera is slightly tilted in an angle because like I mentioned in the music video the camera slightly tilts so that we can see the director's name so what I'm going to do is just go back a few frames because we want to make sure that these position keyframes are overlapping keyframe the position at the start and I go forward about 30 frames and then I'm just going to have it animate through the car window then grab those keyframes, easy ease them, and then go into the graph editor of those position keyframes. And I'll have the influence at 70%. And I'll just play this through just to see how our animation is looking like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just move these keyframes back about like four frames and then play the animation again. And then like I mentioned before, we're going to keyframe the Y rotation and then go towards the end and keyframe it to 14 degrees because we had the null object from before keyframed at negative 14. So the reason why we're keyframing this one at positive 14 is because we want our camera to turn around back to its original position as it's animating out of the car. And then grab those keyframes, easy ease them, go into the graph editor of those keyframes and have the influence at 70% just like the position keyframes. And now if we play this through, this is what we have for our animation. And it's feeling a little too quick as the camera is going through the car. So what I'm going to do is just grab all of these keyframes and just extend it a few frames so that it doesn't go too fast while it's animating in the car. So now if I play this through, we have a smoother animation. I'm also just going to move all these keyframes back two frames. So now if I play this through, this is what we have for our animation. I'm going to grab all these keyframes and move it back a few frames. I'll just move it back to like the one second mark. Play this through once again. And I feel like as the camera goes into the car, it goes a little too fast. So what I'm going to do is just extend this keyframe. So by doing that, I'm just going to grab all these keyframes and then just move it three frames forward. I'm also just going to trim the timeline. And now if I play this through, this is what we have for our final animation. 
to make it look a little better, I'm going to add some motion blur to our scene. So I'll create a new adjustment layer, add a CC radial blur for the blur type. I'll change that to a straight zoom and then keyframe the amount at zero at the start. Click that layer, click U to reveal the keyframes. And then I'm going to go towards the one second mark and keyframe that to 10. Grab those keyframes, easy ease them. And now if I play this through, as you guys can see, there's some motion blur as the camera is moving. Now, of course, this one isn't going to look as good as the one in the actual music video because that entire scene was done in Blender, but this is a pretty good idea of how the camera movement or the camera animation was going on throughout that music video. But that is all I have for this video. I hope you guys learned something new. I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.